All righty. Well, guys, today is another episode of Horror Talk, and I am joined by today one of my favorite YouTube subscribers, and not subscribers, that's to say content owners ever, the horror couple, Kaylee and Rob. How are you guys tonight? Good. Good. How are you? Thanks so much for having us. Oh, no problem. No problem. I am very well. So I guess I'll start with Rob for this one. How did you get into horror exactly? Um, yeah. It was a couple different things, but I think for the most part, um, just growing up, like, um, I, I never really, like, fit in with, like, the normal kids, like, the preppy kids and, like, the jocks. I always hung out with, like, the skateboarding kids and, like, the goth kids mm -hmm. and... Um, I got into like punk rock and metal and I was going to like punk rock shows and I, I was really into music like growing up and um, I had like a big record collection and from there I was finding more and more obscure like bands mm -hmm. and underground music and from there I was like let me check out some obscure movies and stuff like that and of course I knew like the major franchises but then I found out like you know I went down the whole like 80s slasher rabbit hole and I was like oh so it kind of stemmed from that and uh just like being a fan of like stuff that's not so much normal i always tried to find stuff that i always found weird stuff cool or like interesting to me so and um yeah and uh right away when i joined instagram i just started posting like my horror convention pics and uh i made friends almost immediately and uh it's actually where i met kaylee so it worked out pretty good <laughs> That's amazing. You know what? Your history sounds a little bit like mine when I was in school because, you know, when I was a little kid, I liked horror a lot. And, you know, people used to look at me weird. Oh, my God, he likes horror and this and that. So I definitely can somewhat relate to being the kid in school that liked different things. I, that's definitely relatable. Now, I had to ask with Kaylee, how did you get into horror exactly? Well, when I was really little, uh, my daddy showed me Jaws, and I consider that like a horror movie because it's just, it was so scary. Um, so, and, and Jurassic Park. So, like, from there, like, I just always liked scary movies, like, from, like, a very, like, young age. They always scared me, and I just get excited and really passionate about them. Yeah, it's funny because Jaws, I definitely consider a horror movie. The first one is the best one. So I definitely agree with that. You know, that movie made us not want to go swimming ever. So, yes, I totally, totally understand with that being a horror movie. Shark. Now, I guess I'm better today. Oh, are you gonna say the shark from back then looks better than films today for some reason. That shark looks amazing in that film. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I feel like no other shark films really kind of got it. No, they Jaws, don't. there are a couple good ones, but I feel like Jaws is like top tier at the list in terms of shark horror films. It's, so it's Like PG, dude, too. And like, you know that scene where like Quint gets like eaten in half on the boat. Like, I don't know how that was like PG. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes in that movie. The opening was, you know what, though? I must say the opening was very iconic alone with that movie. But there, uh, I watched Jaws, I think, for the first time in full. I have seen bits and pieces of it before, but I don't think I watched it in full until 2020 before coronavirus and the pandemic kind of started. I think it was about January or February I watched it, and I absolutely loved the first film. So... Good. It's definitely a classic for many reasons. Yeah. Definitely, it's like one of those films. Too, like, like even if you've never seen the film, when you hear that like theme, din, 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 you know exactly what it is. It's one of those things, like you know. So yeah, you know it's about to go down, and it's about to go down in the worst way. So the worst way. So I gotta ask. I guess I'll start with Kaylee for this one. What are some of your favorite horror films? Um, my favorite horror movie is It um, from twenty seventeen. And it's Chapter 2, um, Halloween 1978, of course, and, like, Hall Halloween 2018. I, those are probably the, the four that come to, to mind as my very favorite. Mm. Yeah, Halloween is a classic, so I definitely understand with that. Those are some good ones, though. Okay, for Rob, for you, what are some of your favorites? Uh, I have two, like, big favorites, uh, 1978 Halloween and the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like that film to me is so like raw and brutal and like the way it's shot, like it's terrifying. And uh, I, I can't believe that film came out in 1974. I just can't believe like that film was out. And 
I actually like read the history and it was like banned in several countries, banned in several theaters. So like that film wow. definitely like pushed the envelope as far as horror goes. I feel like the, the original Texas and like the first Halloween, I feel like from that we got like the whole like 80s like slasher goodness that happened afterwards. And I feel like, I feel like without those movies, like the whole 80s thing, I don't know, it probably, it wouldn't have been the same for sure. So I always like go back to those first two films as like the blueprints of like, my favorite, which is like the 80s period, but I give those films like so much credit for like starting the whole slasher thing. I feel like it was, for me, I feel like it was like um, Halloween 78 and it was Texas 74 that was like the grandfathers of like this like slasher like thing that happened, so. Yeah, you know, there are so many great 80s slashers and you know, I kind of agree with a lot with what you just said. A lot of them I really love. Like they're even the standalone ones really rocked in that era. Um, I don't know if you've watched a documentary called "Going to Pieces: Rise of the Slasher Film." Yeah, because I definitely recommend that because that is an awesome documentary on slasher films and like how they kind of got started. So I definitely can gather pretty much slashers. I'm assuming are your favorite subgenre. Oh, absolutely, especially like straight out of the '80s. I, I just love um. I just love like the whole uh, concept of it. Like they're all basically similar, but I like when you meet a cast, the stereotypical jock, the stereotypical cheerleader, the stereotypical nerd, and they all get hacked up one by one till there's one like final girl or boy. I just, I love it, man. It, like, and it never gets old. And th that's what happened to me. Like once you get into this stuff, it's like, it's like potato chips. You can't just have just one because there's a lot of sequels. There's a lot of like similar movies and especially like, in the 80s, like with the um, the slasher thing, there was like all these holidays. It wasn't just Halloween. There was Silent Night, Deadly Night. There was April Fool's Day. There was like all, like all this like New Year's Evil. There was like there was there were so many different things to ways to go. And uh, like throughout the year, you can pick like a certain date and watch that movie every year, which we we do normally. Yeah. So. And I think what's great about that era with all of the holidays, some of them were really bad, but it's like people couldn't resist not watching them. It was just like a big, big thing. So I love how that's one thing with I say with Halloween. I like how they made like basically a horror movie for every holiday. So it was like no holiday was really safe because it was all of them. That pretty much, you know, after that, it was so many. So I definitely agree. I think slashers are a really good time. Granted, there are some that like, are bad, in my opinion, but there are some that really shine. There's also the ones that are really bad, they're good. So they're yeah. They're so bad, they make you laugh. or they're, It's almost like funny how bad they are. So, um, yeah, that's the thing. And I, I got into, like, low-budget films and, like, fan-made films and, like, stuff like that where it was, like, like some of them are just fun to watch you know what i mean so technically and i definitely agree with the point that you said before you know it's like a potato chip you can't just have one because that's how i feel with horror collecting i feel like once you kind of get into it it's like this non-stop just continuous ride of collecting so i guess that gets into my next question what are some of y'all favorite like horror items to collect uh, we love Funko Pops, like hard. Well, you got Funko me. You got me. You got me into the pops. Yes, uh, we love those. We love the Neckas. Um, like the the Neckas are amazing. I agree. We love those. We don't have them displayed right now, but um, I lo we love those. Um, we also collect Blu-rays, um, of course, and horror T-shirts. Uh, posters, autographs, like um, yeah, like um, at first I just collected movies, and um. I would go to conventions and like get autographs, hang those up and start collecting autographs. But then when I met Kaylee, she like had all these pops. And like at first I'm like, what are these things? And she kind of got me into them. So now we, we collect the figures too. And uh, that's another rabbit hole that keep, you can keep going down. Yeah. <laughs> it never ends. Yeah, it, yeah, it's crazy because Funko Pops, they have really, I see they're really, really popular. I don't know too much about them, but I will say the naked figures, I have a couple of them myself, and they are really cool. I love, like, the amount of detail that they put into them, so I definitely agree with that. Okay, with the horror conventions, I want to ask, who are some of your favorite horror icons you guys have met so far and look forward to meeting in the future? Um, um, I guess I'll go with Kaylee for this one. <laughs> I, 
um, Richard Dreyfus, like my first convention. So that was, and he from Jaws, yeah, and that, that was, was amazing. That was um, uh, and also uh, did we did a photo op with uh, five of the seven like kids from It at that convention. So I didn't get to really talk to them too much, but I was fangirling out. It was didn't, so awesome. Did you run away after the photo? Yeah, I got You're nervous. Like, I can't stay here. And she took off. I oh my god, oh my that god. is so awesome, though. You know, I was discussing my last episode. You know, it's so awesome when you go to these conventions and meet these people. It's like these people, I'm like the horror celebrities. They in their mind, I don't want to say they feel. They might feel like, oh my god, I don't see the big deal with why these people are, you know, big fans. But we're really big fans of their films. And I think it's crazy because I feel like some of them really don't, in a sense, feel like that their movie is going to be big and it's not going to be impactful only for it to be something, whether it's a year from now or a couple years later, it turns into this really big thing. Yeah. So People, um, they did these movies like over 30, 40 years ago. And like, you know, it's like victim number seven from Friday the 13th, part five. And a lot of they don't think of themselves like big, but you know, to me, that's a big deal because it's like an obscure guest and it's kind of cool. Like, so, I mean, for me, I'm, I always freak out about like the obscure guests or somebody that's l lesser famous, but I like their character. So, but um, to answer your question, um, unfortunately he's not with us anymore, but at the conventions, uh, Sid Haig, Captain Spaulding to me was always like the nicest guy in the world. And I met him once, got a photo op with him, but because he was so friendly every time, I went back to Monster Mania or um, any convention. I would just find something for him to sign or go to his photo op because he, he was such a sweet guy and, like, such a funny guy. He, he was just always, like, so good to his fans, you know? So Sid Haig's definitely up there for me, one of them. Um, there's a couple of good ones. Uh, Joe, Bob, and Darcy. Oh, my God. That was Thank my favorite. You. Thank you, yeah. Those, they were my favorite people meeting at a convention because they were so, so nice. Wait a minute, speak of the devil. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, Joe Bob. You can't go wrong with Joe Bob Briggs and Darcy. The, and Darcy. You can't go wrong with those two. That's signed by Darcy. And uh, over there. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Should I make you get it? Okay. Go, go get her. <laughs> I want to show it off. I'm putting her to work. You guys have quite the Funko Pop collection I'm seeing from behind here. Oh, yeah, right, thank you. Right here, Joe Bob's. I think it's Joe. Yeah, Joe Bob signed to that horror couple. You rock. Oh, wow. That is awesome. At the bottom here, what? Darcy signed to that horror couple. What'd you say? Oh, a driving kind of couple. I, I thought that was pretty sweet. So <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, right? That, uh, which convention was this that you guys met them? Um, Monster the Mania? Monster Mania in, um, at the, in Pennsylvania last October. Okay. Yeah, because I know they just had another one that a couple of friends of mine went to. I think it was a couple of weekends ago. I'm not sure which convention it was. I think it was the I think it was the Monster Mania. I'm not for sure at the moment, but Yeah. Is that the one? That's awesome. But the Dexter Garage reunion. I think I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it cuz it was it just passed a couple week a couple of weekends ago it was a big convention. But that's awesome though. Now I got to ask cuz I always ask everyone this. What are some of your least favorite horror films? Um what I really dislike that a lot of people love, I don't like Midsummer. Um I'm, I I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um Oh, I I I, I Totally agree. I've only, to be fair, I have only seen it once, but I paid attention the entire way through, and I, I was just like, see. "What did I?" Want? No, I didn't like it. And you know what? I liked her I liked Hereditary, but I didn't like Midsummer. Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, I couldn't get into that one. But. Midsummer. Mm -hmm. What's one that you that you don't like? Oh, I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get yelled at for this one because everybody seems to love it, but I couldn't get into this film, and I was disappointed by it. Uh, the Friday remake. I just, I what? Yeah, I know. Actually, I remember because we. I was talking about this with someone else, and you said in the comments you weren't a fan of it. Uh, I yeah. A lot of the younger kids like it, but like I like grew up watching like eighties Jason, eighties Jason, and like for some reason this just didn't like. I don't know. Like um, what I did like about Rob Zombie's Halloween remake was that he showed us Michael as a kid. He showed us Smith's Grove. He showed us stuff we never saw. So like in my head, I was hoping that this remake was going to show Jason drowning as a kid. They were going to show Miss Voorhees killing spree. 
They were going to show stuff like that. And, dude, they, like, killed Mrs. Voorhees in, like, four seconds. Uh, they didn't show Jason as a kid at all. It was just – I feel like the whole movie was just, sort of, like, focused on, like, this douchebag cast I didn't, couldn't get into. And, <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, the, the kills weren't that great. I, I, I feel like the kills in the, the 80s movies were just as good or better. And – um. I like the remake. I, I don't know. I, I like the remake. You know what? You can join my friend Darcy on that one because she doesn't like the remake either. So Darcy. you and her are in the same boat with that because she hates it as well. So. Hell girl or it's, Darcy we're talking about? Uh, no, one of my uh, other friends, uh, the interview that I did yesterday with my other guests. Well, she's my one of my best friends locally here, but she hates that remake as well. So I think it's... Funny, that's a remake. It's either people like it or they don't like it. I've noticed, but I liked the Friday the Thirteenth reboot. I did. It's nice though. I met Derek Mears a few times, and he's the coolest guy you'll ever meet. So, uh, I mean, not yeah, not my favorite Friday film, but he is like the nicest. If you're going to a convention, just meet Derek Mears because he he is a cool guy. And I did like the Hatchet film he did. So, um, uh, yeah, he was in um Hatchet Three. Yeah. Yep. That was a cool one. And yeah, and that's actually becoming out of all of the Hatchet films, that one is seeming to become my favorite in the franchise. Yeah, and I think it's I'm slowly leaning towards that one. I like the second one a lot. I pretty much like all of the Hatchet films, but I think three is becoming a favorite of mine. I've noticed. Yeah. So as far as the remake goes, I rather watch Jason in space, or I rather watch Jason be that like creature that crawls into his sister and goes to hell. What? I, <laughs> Oh, my God. You know what? Okay, I, d don't quote me, but I just did a review on Jason Goes to Hell the other day. And I feel like out of all of the Friday the 13th films, that one seemed to have the most nastiest kills, in my opinion. Like, I could be wrong with this statement, but I feel like that one had some really, like, just over-the-top nasty kills in it for a... Friday the 13th film. Also, like, the same thing with part five, you know, like, the imposter Jason. Everybody says, like, oh, it's not Jason, it's not Jason. I feel like that film has some badass kills, dude. Oh, like, uh, and that's my least favorite Friday. That one is my least favorite one, and I say this all of the time. I do not like that one. I don't know, like, why? And it's not for the obvious reasons. It's because, oh, it's not Jason. I think why I specifically don't like Friday the 13th Part 5, I found the characters repulsively annoying in that film. Oh, who's that guy that was giving the candy, the candy bar to Vic and he got axed up? Like, you want to oh, my God. I forget his name. Just forget it, Vic. Just forget it. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Oh, my God. Yeah, the characters in that movie, I just couldn't. I found them so annoying. It was like, yeah, but no, like. They're, no, they are, yeah. they're, they're just there to get hacked up, really. Like, you know. <laughs> like, I feel like with that movie, they purposely did it. They purposely did it. Yeah, I think so. You might be right about mm -hmm. that. You might be right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, they purposely. I feel like Betty to the Eyes is really a cool one. How Deborah Voorhees died in that. I thought that was like that was pretty cool. I thought I thought like just little little kills in that movie were pretty cool though. I mean, if I guess to say a kill in that movie, even though I really didn't care for any of them that much, but I guess to say if there was a kill in that movie that was somewhat redeemable, it was obviously the guy that gets it on the motorcycle <laughs> that gets decapitated. Oh, more. <laughs> Yeah, because that was so well deserved because he was probably the most annoying. So, what about the mom though? Ethel, she's like, Yeah, fuck Wad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. I was kind of glad when they both got it personally. So, <laughs> I don't know if you can... it's Instagram, Rob. Okay, I, I didn't know if I can curse. I think <laughs> it's, it's so okay. How did you guys like? I guess on an axis with your YouTube channel because I watch y'all videos all of the time. How did the inspiration come with that exactly? Um, like the pandemic, and we were both, you know, we we were bored, and all we were doing was watching like horror movies every day. And then we talked about it. And we're like, why don't we just go? You know, why don't we just do something about that? Like, why don't we film us like talking? Yeah, we were like, we, we'd like watch it and like just funny conversations would come out of it. Like funny comments would come out of it. And we're like, we should have recorded that. That was pretty funny. And, uh, 
And your mom even like suggested it. She was like, you guys should do a YouTube channel with your horror. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. And I, I didn't know what to expect at first. And honestly, like um, this community is, I got to give them credit. They're like the nicest people. Cause right away, like people, like it was overwhelming. A lot of people were just so supportive and I wasn't prepared for that. And uh, yeah, I, you know what? I definitely agree on that. Cause it's, you know, you're usually, for, at least for me, I'm always scared to try new endeavors. So, like, when I first, like, said, okay, I guess I'm going to start a live podcast, I'm like, ain't nobody going to watch this. But I'm seeing people have been watching it, and I must say, it's been a blast doing these lives and, like, talking with a whole bunch of different people. It's been very fun to do so far. The horror community is honestly... I must say probably one of the most loyal loyal communities I think I have ever been a part of because one thing, whatever you do, they going to support it. That's one thing I really, really like. Right. Yeah, there's a lot more love than hate in this community for sure. And uh, it, it, I met, so, I met like, all my best friends through this community. I met Kaylee through this community. Like, you know, so, yeah, it's, like, it's the nicest people, the, mo the nicest people, the most creative people. Especially when you're at a convention, it's such a nice feeling because you're surrounded by people like, and like, you know, it's like, you know, I have something in common with that guy. I got something in common with that guy. It's like, it's so easy to like, just connect with people, you know? So uh, that's one thing I like seeing when everyone goes to the conventions. I like, like seeing the photos of people meet. Cause I think that is so cool. Like when they meet each other and they like, where they meet the other like users on Instagram and they like take photos. I'm like, that's so cool. Cause like, it's, it's a difference when you're talking to them on Instagram, but I feel like when you're meeting them in, in person, that's when you know it's surreal. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, that's a great feeling. A lot of times I felt like, like we have like such good online friends. When, when we do meet them in person, it's, it's like, it's almost like we just talked yesterday. It's not, it's not weird or anything. Cause I'm so used to talking to them. So it's like, Yo, what up? What up? So, you know, so, so uh, yeah, I, you know what? I definitely agree. Cause like I've said before, I have met some of the most amazing individuals from this community. So I definitely, definitely agree with that for the most part. I, that's one of the many things I love about it. So, uh huh. Do you go to conventions? Uh, no, I live in upstate New York, so I'm like way up. <laughs> Something up there. I forgot the name of it though. Dude, what's it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like way a lot, but there are some cool people around here as well. So I'm sure, definitely, that there are. So okay, I gotta ask with the everything with horror. What is if you had to choose to be in any decade of horror, like literally, you could go back and relive it. What would it be and why? Uh, I would say the '80s. I would say the '80s. Like uh, to me. It, if you look at the 80s, there was like a slasher film in the theaters every weekend. And if you look how everything was released, after Friday 13th came out, like there was so many imitators. So like every weekend there was another slasher film out basically. And I would just love to, uh, I would love to live through that and just see like, just see um, like this come out, this come out, this come out. And like every year there was a new Friday for a while. That would have been amazing for me to go to theaters and see that. So you know what? It's amazing, though. I agree with you, though. 80s horror is my favorite. And you know what? It's not even, like, I love slashers, but what one thing I like about 80s horror, it like, and I've said this countless times before, there was so much room, like, for everything to shine. Like, there were vampire flicks that were awesome. You had awesome zombie films. It was like every sub-genre in the 80s, it was like all of them shined, I feel like, in my opinion, during that decade. Oh, it's, pretty much. It's going on today. If you look at today, there's still sequels and remakes that, that are stemming from that, that decade. So, like, you know, we see, like, a lot of remakes that are originally from the 80s, and... uh the, the recalls that are coming out now, which I, I'm a fan of because it's like half remake, half sequel. So like, I'm, as a fan of the storyline, I always want to see a sequel, but it, the remake part's good for the younger crowd that's not too familiar with the story too. So I feel like the recall thing is actually a cool thing that's happening lately, you know, so. Yeah, I agree. Most of the requels that have come out most of them I've liked. I'm trying to think. I can't think as it may be one that I haven't really liked as much, but I, I, most of them I've, I've liked. Because like I said, what I think is unique about them, 
Yeah, you have the old audience, of course, because they're bringing these legacy characters, and then you have a new audience because they may be not be not familiar with the original story. So all in all, it's bringing in a new audience. So that's something I think some of them are really doing well. Like I said, I think because we've had three week rules, well, four, I should say, but I think all of them have been good so far. So I haven't seen a bad requel yet, but I'm sure there'll be some, there'll be one down the line. It'll be a horrible one. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's inevitable. But I, like, I thought Town Dreaded Sundown was pretty well done. I feel like they kind of retold. Yes. Like, that's a remake I don't feel like anyone talks about. I loved The Town Dreaded Sundown. And while I still have not watched the original one yet, mm -hmm. I thought that movie was very well done. Yeah, so well, good. I was a fan of the original. So when this came out, I was like, they're retelling the story, but they're also, like, adding to the story. I'm like, this is pretty brilliant. And I don't know if that was the first one, but that was the first one I came across. And I'm like, that's an interesting way to do it. Like, you know, so. And I feel like the new screen kind of jumped on that. A, yeah, a little bit like with like retelling the original story, but yeah. Uh, real quick, how did you guys feel about the new Scream movie? We uh, liked it. I liked it. I liked it. I liked it. Um, it wasn't our favorite, but it wasn't our least favorite, right? No, so. no. Yeah, I liked it. I, I um, I was really sad about like one big scene in the movie, but I knew that was going to be inevitable. Yeah, I, you know what? This is months later, and my heart is still processing that. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I agree. I'm still processing that months <laughs> later. I, <laughs> I, I thought it was cool to see, like, um, um, I thought it was cool to see some returning characters, though, in the new one. No, no, that was awesome. I'm saying, you know, because the big thing Oh, you're, happened, trying, you're trying not to spoil it. I didn't know, you know, I, you know, I don't know. We are not trying to spoil it. I know exactly what you're talking about, Kaylee, though. Yeah, there's a heartbreaking moment that I'm still, you know, in the... We're still that you know what I will say not to like spoil it right quick, but I will say that was kind of hard to watch because when it went on, like when I went to go see it and it, that part came on, I actually yelled "What the f" during it. So yeah, I mean, still having a little trouble processing that, but I definitely understand what you're saying. I thought it, I do. It would have worked too if that character didn't die, but someone else died. Like they traded places. I don't want to say who, but uh. Someone else could have got killed off instead of that character, so. Yeah, I mean, you knew it was coming. <laughs> we all knew it was coming, obviously, but I don't think we were expecting it that fast. I uh, like it, the new Scream. Oh, I liked it a lot. I had such low expectations going in because I was not a fan of Halloween Kills, really. So with going into that, I'm like, this is going to be really stupid. But I actually really ended up liking the new Scream. I had such low expectations going in it, though. I thought that Same thing with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the new one. I had such low expectations, and I ended up enjoying it. Hey, yeah, we we watched it like four other times since we watched it like five times I think since it came out. We like it that much. It's a fun movie just to throw on. If when, you're like, like tired at night, you're like, what do you want to watch? I'm like, I don't know, watch the new Texas Chainsaw again. Sure. Yeah, I had a great time with it. I did. I had a great like when I watched it. I'd like legit. I'm like, yeah, this is up there. So a friend of mine gave. But I understand where some people was coming from with the new scream. It was either the people liked it or they didn't. So, I mean, I understand. You can't please everybody, yeah. so. No, but, like, as a fan of, like, Texas and Leatherface, I, that part of me is just so happy to see another film come out. You know what I mean? And I feel like the wait for that new Leatherface was a long time. I feel like it redeemed itself because the movie we got before that, I don't know if you guys have seen Leatherface, <laughs> not Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, but the one they did in 2017. <laughs> they totally redeemed themselves because that movie was horrible. Leatherface, I, as for that film. Yeah, I didn't really care to. It was okay, but I don't really want to watch it again. <laughs> that twist was. Yeah. That twist at the end was unnecessary, and I don't know what the point was, and like how we thought it. Yeah. I don't know. That movie was horrible. I was like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, the only I couldn't with that, so I, was, I couldn't. I was trying to find, like, one positive thing to say about that movie, and I was thinking the only positive thing about that movie is they showed, like, the origins of, like, the pretty woman mask and where those masks came from. So I'm like, I guess that's a little bit cool. But, the guy that uh, played um, Leatherface was cute. I yeah, that's what I mean. He's a, <laughs> he was, like, a pretty boy. That That's not cool, right? 
Leatherface. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? And I agree because when you picture Leatherface, you like picture this grotesque man. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I didn't care for it. I mean, I knew when I was going in watching that one, it wasn't, I, I had low expectations anyway, so it wasn't like they were set high yeah. with that film. Yeah. So, they weren't. <laughs> they used the same title that was previously used. There's already a Leatherface. It's part three. They should have called it something else. I just feel like, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't like when they repeat titles like in a series either. Cause it's, it gets like they did with Halloween 2018. They just oh. called it Halloween. <laughs> I call it Halloween. I always say Halloween 2018. I always call it like Halloween 2018. Like Yeah, I call it H18. I don't even like say Halloween. I'm like, oh, Halloween 2018. I'm like, all right. Isn't there like Halloweens now in the series? If you, uh, can, if you count Rob Zombies, there's like the original, there's Zombies. There's 12 overall. Oh, no, but I mean, when this the ones with the title Halloween, there's like three different ones now. Oh, uh, you mean timelines? Yes. Yeah. So there's like three movies called Halloween now. So yeah, I mean it gets confusing and Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's I mean probably someone's looking at it like, well, I don't know which is which. So yeah. I, <laughs> that's one thing I feel like we're so do one thing I wish we'd get already, because like I feel like the lawsuit is over. We need a new Friday the thirteenth film. So I'm like can we just please get one more and just like make it to thirteen at least? Uh, that would be so awesome. I wonder what direction they'd go in though. Are they gonna take it from the oh nine movie? Are they gonna start fresh? Are they gonna do a prequel? I just wonder what they're gonna do with the whole thing. They could, but I feel like they could start fresh. I feel like they could just do something else. The yeah, I, it, it'd be very interesting to see, and I feel like it'll blow up, too, considering how long the fans have been waiting for this. I think it's going to be huge. Right? Did you guys play the video game at all? Because that was awesome. Oh, no, but it, I've it's seen good. the graphics. It looks they good, look though. amazing. Oh, the game was amazing. Ama like, I will say, minus all the bugs and all of the things that were, like, wrong with it, like, internally i must say the amount of detail that they put into that game you can tell they were hardcore friday fans like for real and it was awesome now in the game are you jason or are you are you the counselor run, running from jason you can play as either oh that's you can play as either yeah see i liked playing as jason personally and slaughtering everyone I mean, I didn't mind playing as a counselor, but for me, I actually enjoyed playing as Jason and running around killing everyone, so... One of those things, though, if you're, like, the counselor, if you have sex, do you die? Does, like, Jason show up in the middle of it? And it's basically you play as a counselor, and you can, like, basically try to escape. Oh. And what that was is you could either escape by calling the police... I believe, or you could escape by killing Jason, which there's like a whole process you have to do in order to kill him. Like you have to grab the mom's sweater and then you have to like beat Jason's mask off. Oh. And then I think you have to call it, you can call in Tommy Jarvis also. They have a thing where you can call in Tommy Jarvis. And somebody has to be Tommy Jarvis because when... The other counselor, and it has to be a girl counselor, when she puts on the sweater, it stuns Jason, and whoever is playing as Tommy is the only one that can kill him. It has to be lined up and perfectly. You have to basically do everything right in order to do it, but you can kill Jason. The amount of detail, like I said, they put into the game was amazing. It was. That it really was. They were in a video game even though the lawsuit was going on. That's strange. Yeah, they had to wind up stopping content. That was it was like a whole bunch of content coming out for it, and then when the lawsuit like really, really started being a problem, they had to stop it. Unfortunately, yeah, well, they added like all of the Jasons. You could like choose a whole bunch of like that was one thing I really found unique about it because they added in all of the different Jason looks, so you could play as part two Jason, part three, part four. That was something I thought was really cool. And they added pretty much, like, all of the Jasons. The only one we didn't get, unfortunately, because of the lawsuit, was the Uber Jason from Jason X. <laughs> well, with the big gap in the Friday films, I'm sure you noticed what's been happening recently is the fans have stepped up. And, the, like, there's, like, 20 Jason fan films out there now. 
Yeah, some of the fan films are awesome. I know you guys have probably have seen Never Hike Alone, so I think everyone has, and that was pretty well done. Yes. Uh, I feel you know, like Jason Rising was good. Um, yes. There was uh, Roseblood. Yes. There, there was a few of them, and I, I just feel like I just feel like the like the fans are so passionate. Like if if they if they ain't gonna get a film, they dude. They're, they're like, we're gonna make one, dude. They're like, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, you know, it's amazing because Friday the 13th is one of those franchises. It has its fan base. I mean, I was just discussing this the other episode. I love when it's like the Friday the 13th, the actual holiday, because then you know like a Friday the 13th shirt is getting ready to come out, and it's like going to be killer. I'm not wearing so, yesterday, actually. Yesterday, yeah. I, I try to wear it on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta ask while we are talking about Friday the Thirteenth. I guess what are your favorite Friday the Thirteenth films? I'll go with Kaylee first on this one, okay. or I'll go with Rob because I think I went with Kaylee first okay. last time. So I'll go back to him. For me, um, my favorite—I love the whole series almost, but my favorites to watch back to back are one to four because I feel like they take place right after each other. And, like, if you're chilling one night, just watching movies, I feel like one, two, three, four, are, it's such a good, like, like back-to-back -back thing. And, um, uh, yeah, and um, I've, seen, I've, seen, I've seen interviews with Tom Savini, and he said part four, it was supposed to be the final Jason. That's why he had him hacked up in the head. So uh, it is a good, like... Uh, I saw we thought it was about to be the final chapter. <laughs> never, and there'll, there'll be Jason movies after we're dead, probably, still going on. So, <laughs> but Yep. But um, yeah, for me, I I love all of them. I love one to four to watch like to marathon. But I, I'm also a fan of like C.J. Graham Part Six. I'm a fan of when like Kane Hutter got involved in Seven Onward. Um, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of the whole series. But to watch films back to back, I feel like one to four is for me. Because like said, five is kind of different, and it's not really a part of the, it's like a different storyline and different idea. So. Okay, well, Kaylee, for you, what's your favorite Friday the 13th film? Uh, my favorite is the original. I love uh, nice. uh, number one. That's a good, that's, that one's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> favorite one. Yeah, I love some good old Mrs. Voorhees. Do you guys have some favorite kills? Oh, absolutely. I love the, the, um, the yeah, the Kevin Bacon uh, kill yeah, uh, when cool. he's, like, laying in bed and you just see, like, some, you know, a knife come through the, the like, Mattress, that is like so. Have you watched the uncut version of it? Because you know, you watch the uncut, you get to see all of that. I mean, there's not a um, largely vast difference with the uncut Friday the third, uh, the uncut version of the original Friday the Thirteenth. But I will say, hit the his death in the movie, Kevin Bacon's. You really get to see in the uncut version. You see his fully. That's awesome. Well, also, Annie. That in, when Mrs. Worries cut her throat in the uncut version, it's much more blood coming out. Yeah, but not much. Yeah, much more blood. You know. So yeah. And what's cool about the first Friday is it's more of like a who done it. Like in two, three, if, like onward, we we know it's Jason, but in the first one, it is kind of like a mystery. It the kills are done from point of view. The can't you know? It, it's kind of like a like a kind of who done it type movie. Yeah. You know. And, okay. Yeah, you know what I like it because I like the point of view. Yeah, you know that's one thing that I really liked about eighty slashers. That whole point of view aspect, I really did. I feel like we really don't kind of get that anymore, and it's unfortunate because I really enjoyed the point of view slashers back then. Going so going back to one of your earlier questions, um, I met Betsy Palmer before she passed away, and she was one of the nicest ladies I've ever met in my life. Like, um, yeah, I've heard that from numerous people, that are like even numerous interviews that I've watched, are like people talking about their horror convention. She's like one that definitely is always mentioned. Loved her as Mrs. Voorhees, and it's funny because. She only took that part because she needed a new car, and that was the only reason that she took that part. Because she said she didn't believe, she thought the movie was just going to be straight trash. Well, yeah, she, and she, said, she thought to herself, who's going to watch this piece of crap? No, nobody's going to see it. So she just took the job, yeah. But um, I remember at the convention, she was wearing like a sweater, just like Mrs. Voorhees. And I walked up to her and I said hello to her. The first thing she said to me was, "You are so cute." And I, I just thought it made me, nah. it made me laugh. And um, you know how like everybody has a fee for their signature. She signed my poster and she signed an eight by ten. 
And I forgot how much it was, but she told me how much I owe her. And she's like, it will be this much, please. And then she goes, because I'm a whore. And I was like, <laughs> what? I was like, and this, you know, she's an older woman. I wasn't expecting her to say that. But, uh, and then we took a picture and she gave me a kiss on the cheek. She was just so sweet. Like, um, yeah, I absolutely love, you know, Friday the 13th, I must say why the original one is on the slower side. I still do like the film. I mean, it is kind of on the slower side compared to the other ones, but I will say Betsy Palmer's performance as Mrs. Voorhees, legendary. I just, legendary. I just love her whole performance in that film. So the, 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 the decapitation scene at the end is legendary, too. I just love her decapitation scene. Um, yeah, I love this, her whole... I think one of my this favorite parts of her in that film... I like when she's, like, sort of revealing herself to Alice, but you could, like, see that her mental state isn't even there at this point. And I don't know why I laugh at this scene every time the fight when she has with Alice and she, like, pimp slaps her. <laughs> I don't know why I find this hilarious every time I watch it, but that scene, every time I watch it, I die laughing because it's, like... It was hilarious for some reason. I always thought it was funny, too, because Alice was getting her ass beat, and she was screaming about what happened to Jason. I felt like Alice should have been like, bitch, I didn't even know your son. <laughs> like, you know how it was <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, I just, that's what it goes back to what I said. I just love that scene where she's, like, revealing herself. She's like, you let him drown. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, all right. <laughs> But, yeah, I, I will say it's a shame that she passed away. She looked like she was awesome. And I just – I always say with the original Friday the 13th, she truly was the star of the first one, Betsy Palmer. Another mm -hmm. awesome person I met it, – it's all coming to me now, but um, the t my first convention ever, the Toll Man from Phantasm, Angus Scrim, was, was such a nice – I wasn't a fan of that one, man. Okay, and let me tell you – I, the only thing I really enjoy for Phantasm, and I will say, the ending to that movie, very, very creepy and effective, the ending to that film. You, you don't like the tall man or the atmosphere or, like, the character? I thought the tall man himself is, like, not even the movie. I'm just talking about the character himself. The character himself was creepy, and he had like this Robert Stack creepy vibe to him. I feel one. Love unsolved mysteries. We love unsolved mysteries. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, we'll get on that conversation next, definitely. But back to what I was saying with Phantasm, you know, he had like this creepy. The tall man. I thought he had like this creepy vibe to him, and I thought he was a cool character. But I feel like the movie is a whole for me. I didn't really, it didn't keep my interest. I found it more. That was just me. me. Maybe you got to give it another watch. Yeah, you know what? A lot of people on here have told me Phantasm 2 is better than the first one. It's more faster paced, but the first one's my personal favorite out of the whole I, well, I honestly like the entire series because just like Friday, I think they take place like back to back almost. Mm -hmm. So I, I, okay. there's five Phantasm. Yeah, I have the second one actually in my movie collection. I said I'm going to eventually give it a shot because there are some people that have messaged me and they've been like, well, the second one is a little bit better. So I said I was going to go with it but oh my god tell me you got tell me got tell me about your fandom with unsolved mysteries because oh. i watched that show as a kid with my grandmother and it was nightmare fuel Dude, mm. i remember being a little kid and uh this is before i like really started like getting into anything scary and he would just scare me like his voice uh the fog behind him his creepy voice and uh a lot of time. well, Unsolved Mysteries was, was always on, like, when I was little. It ended at 9 o'clock, which was my bedtime when I was a little kid. And Yep, it used to come on Lifetime. I, when I was a kid, it used to come on Lifetime, but my grandmother would watch it right before bed, and I'm like, I, why? A lot of times, they do, like, ghost stories. They do, But a lot of times, they have, like, like uh, fugitives on the run, and I'm from... Yes! I'm from oh, my God! Uh, and they do the creepy sketches, and it'll be no sound. Yeah. You all you're seeing on your TV is this creepy ass sketch, and it's no sound even playing. You're just seeing this creepy sketch on the TV. I'm originally I'm from Long Island, New York, and I I remember this clearly. They have like this police sketch of like this killer that's out there, and they said he was last seen in Long Island, New York, <laughs> and that's how the show ended. And it was my bedtime, and I I couldn't sleep. 
I was like, this Dude, I never used to be able to sleep. I would like be sweating. <laughs> I kid you not. I would be sitting in the dark sweating. I'm like, you put this bullshit on and then you expect me to go to sleep <laughs> after watching this. Yeah. But uh, it's what, it, what, what platform is it on now? Because we watch it every it morning. It was on Prime. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime now. So I watch Yes, I caught them all. Yeah. I caught them all. You know what's amazing? Because it used to be a person that used to put them on YouTube. And this was before the Amazon Prime because for the longest, people would put them on YouTube and they would constantly take them down, I guess, because they didn't have the rights and all of that. And it's just amazing because it's like, now I absolutely love the show and watch it continuously. But it's like, as a kid, you couldn't have paid me to watch it because it was like, that shit terrified me to no end as a kid. It's like, oh. You watch it nowadays, though, and like you're like, that's what I was afraid of. You're like, okay, and it, it, yeah. Like, I mean, in its own way, I consider unsolved mysteries horror in its own big, way, big time. Uh, Once in a while, they have like a touching story about like family reunions and like animals and like dogs, but uh, they mix it up. Yeah, I was pretty much for the murder, the yeah. missing, the wanted. I was pretty much for those, and the go they did have some creepy ghost stories. I agree. Oh, dude. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, me and Kaylee make breakfast every morning, and as we're eating like our scrambled eggs, we watch Unsolved Mysteries. That, that's that's our morning tradition. So, oh my God, that is so awesome, guys! You know what? I still watch it myself, and I've watched most of them. I have watched most of them, but I'll still go back and rewatch them because I think my thought process is with like the people that's on there. I'm like, what really happened to some of these people? It's like my mind wanders because I'm like, wow, a lot of these people are still either missing or their murder isn't solved. And it's like, what really happened to these people? It's like the stories are so up. creepy. Even the Netflix one that they did. Oh, yeah. Because I don't know, did you guys watch? The Netflix reboot wasn't bad either. I actually will say I like how they gave homage to Robert Stack at least. So. Two episodes of that, but it, it just, I, uh, it wasn't the same without them. They needed, they needed. Yeah. Because it did. If, unless I'm wrong, it didn't have a host, right? They just kind of cut to... No, they didn't have a host at all. No. I mean, you know what, though? Robert Stack is going to always be the OG of that show. He Always. So, I actually, when I get done, I'll send you a photo of it. I actually have a Robert Stack canvas in my room because I, I had to. I'm like, I can't have a horror room without Robert Stack. There's just no way. I... I yeah. Dr. Loomis could have hosted that show, though, with his trench coat. Yes. I feel like he was. <laughs> Dr. Loomis is seriously the pioneer of Halloween. You know, I must say, I think by Halloween 5, he completely loses it. Oh, yeah. But. Hey, this always bothered me about Halloween 5. That one scene where Loomis is screaming at Michael. He's like, go home, Michael, go home. Oh my god, that's one of my favorite. That's when he's like standing in the field and he's like, go home. But what does he say? The rage inside will destroy you. It's like, I just love his performance in that movie because it's wacky at this point. Did you notice though when they go back to the Myers house in part five, it's like some Victorian house. It's not the Myers house. Oh, my God, that house is so horrible. And you know what? Speaking of that, now that you bring up with him, you know what? I watched the documentary, and you know what? That part of when he's screaming at Michael, they actually, Don Shanks, the actor who plays Michael Myers in Halloween 5, said that scene wasn't even the, in the script. What had happened was, I guess Donald Pleasance had approached him, and he was like, you know, I know your, like, shift is over and all, but could you, like, just go in the back and stand there? It's like, the audience doesn't have to see you, but, like, just go back there and stand there, and I'll just be over here yelling. So it's interesting, because that scene, he said, wasn't even in the script. They just shoot, simply improvised with that scene. Oh, yeah. I remember yeah. I saw an interview with um, Donald Pleasance, and they asked him when, he, when he's going to stop doing these, and he said, I'll stop at number 22. So he wanted to, yeah. he wanted to keep being Loomis, and uh, yeah, the, the series ain't the same ever since he left, but... uh. 
Yeah, I, Donald Pleasant. I, you know what? And it's not even just Halloween. I loved him in Prince of Darkness. I don't know if you guys have watched that. He was solid in that film. So it's just like, but I feel like Halloween. He, I always say with Halloween, he was truly the pioneer of that franchise. Oh yeah, Donald Pleasant indeed was. I, yeah. Was a character that like didn't speak or and didn't like he didn't he couldn't communicate with the viewer, so we needed somebody to tell us about him. And so without Luke, there's no story there. We needed somebody. To I shot him six times. It's like that. I just love him saying in Halloween, too, he shot him six times over and over and over and over. It's like, oh, my God. I love Halloween, too, though, when he runs next door. He's like, call the police. And then he goes, <laughs> he goes you don't know what death is. I love that. <laughs> Oh, okay, one of my favorite parts at Halloween, too, I kid you not, with Dr. Loomis, I think it's the part when they're in the car, and he's like, turn this car around right now, and he's like, you're making a big mistake, and he's like, what do the fellows do, usually fire a warning shot, and he like shoots it, and he just turns around. <laughs> oh, yes, that is Whopper Whore. I did forget about Alone in the Dark. That is right. I forgot about that movie. I'm not a huge fan of that one either, though, sadly. I've never seen that. Yeah, well, with the original Halloween, they only had Pleasant for, like, two or three days, I think. Cause, like, so he was there a limited time. and uh, yeah. yeah, he was on. I know for um, Halloween 5, they said he was um, a limited time, too. Because I know Danielle Harris said he drunk bourbon a lot. <laughs> Really? Like, he loved bourbon. Like, so she said you would always smell bourbon on his breath because he loved bourbon. Oh, man. That's an interesting uh, I never knew that one. Yeah, he loved bourbon. So he looked like he was a drinker. But all in all, Donald Pleasance was a great actor. <laughs> I, I definitely... It's a shame because, you know, I, that's the one thing I can say with the Halloween franchise today even though he would have been old as hell, I wonder how 2018 would have came out if he would have been in it. Like, you w do have to wonder. Even with H2O, you wonder how it would have came out. Well, I thought, mm. like, um, well, with Halloween Kills, I thought that guy that was, like, the flashback Loomis was, like, almost, like, identical, dude. I, I thought it was him for a second. They did a very well <laughs> good... They did a good job with that, and I was not expecting it. You, I will say that was one of the... I want to say that was one of the pros with Halloween Kills. They did the flashbacks really nice. Yeah, and that actor was actually at the Monster Mania we were at, and he, he looks just like Loomis. Like, no joke. It wasn't, like, CGI or anything. That guy legit looks like Loomis. Like, like I saw the actor. He's, like, he looks like his brother or something. Yeah. <laughs> that is so crazy. Yeah. That is so crazy. Well, I gotta ask, what are you got? What future horror films are you guys excited for that's coming out this year? Halloween ends. Big time, yeah. Halloween ends. I feel like, I feel like the whole storyline now is just down to, like Michael versus Jamie. That's all it's down to now. Michael, Halloween kills. He he killed the whole town. He killed Jamie's relatives. It's down to just Jamie versus Michael. So I feel like it's gonna be a good final showdown. Yeah. I mean, it'll be. Like, I think. I think they will. I wonder if they're going to go the supernatural route, like like Mike. It's a supernatural thing, or if Michael's just still a man. I, I don't know if they're going to finally answer that question, but I wonder. Yeah, I. You know what? I like. I said. I kind of really hope that one does some redeeming. So I'm really hoping. It, how did you guys feel about X, real quick? Because I know I seen you guys went to go see that. Did you like X? We loved it was amazing. It. Amazing. Uh, so good. That film, that film could have fit in the seventies or eighties, and you know, it, it took me back to like that time period. And like, I really forgot like watching that film that I'm watching a modern film. It really felt like an old school film, and I thought it was it, it was done so well. Have you seen it? Yes, I went to go see it with a group of fans. I actually wrote in my review about it. It really nailed that seventies vibe. Really greatly, I feel like. And there's, greatly. What's coming out? A pre oh, there's a prequel. Pearl. That, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to that too because they're gonna. I think they're they're gonna tell the story about what happened in, in the house previously, which was never explained. So you guys stayed for the, the all the way through the to the end credits, right? Because you know it was a post credits end scene. Yeah, they did like a, a trailer, I think, for Pearl. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, they did because we like stayed all the because after it went off. 
uh, like my friends were like, no, no, stay, because it's like it's a post credits end scene. I'm like, okay, and we stayed and we saw the trailer for that as well. So should be good. Yeah, and I thought that I thought it was so nice just to see like a good slasher film done well nowadays, which is like nowadays it's like hit or miss with that, and I feel like that was like right on the money. So I feel like it was different. I mean. I'd say with X, I don't think it was anything groundbreaking in my opinion, but I liked it, I guess, well enough for what it was. So I don't think it's something I'm going to watch again, to be honest, because I don't, I, I think it's one of those for me. Like, I might possibly watch it one more time, but that's not going to be a movie I'm going to just watch every single time. I can already tell. Right, right. So it's, it's like eating chocolate. Not really, it won't fill you up, but it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it was good. I'm really excited for the Black Phone coming in June. February, February. That's what I'm really excited for. It was supposed to come out actually in January, then I was like so bummed that it got postponed. So, though. that looks really good. Yeah, we, we did a trailer, and yeah. the trailer looked really good. So, yeah. I, I'm really excited. Did you see, are you guys a fan of Jordan Peele at all? Because did you see the trailer? How did you feel about the trailer for Nope? It looked so good and creepy. I'm so excited. And I, the new Candyman was amazing. Yeah, he yeah he produced on that. Yeah, we love yeah. that. And I really Yeah, the new Candyman wasn't bad. I really like the body horror transformation in the new one. Yeah, that was really cool. It like made my skin crawl when he was like scratching his hand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty well done, and yeah. um, they brought back the mother from the original Candyman too. Uh, that was so yes, cool. and my okay, and you want to know my beef with that? I wish she would have gotten more screen time. That was my only complaint with that one. Like, I was happy they brought her back. I was so happy they brought her back because she was an essential key character, and especially in the original one. So I'm thinking with this one, oh, she's gonna be in it. Just a whole bunch, and I was so bummed that they had her only really in that one like scene sequence. I'm like, oh, I wish you would have added her more. That that that's how I felt about yeah. Tony Todd because he just had like a little cameo, and I was like, you got Tony Todd there. I mean, we could. I thought he would have been great for flashbacks. At yeah. Least. I, like like they could. I thought I will say I thought that was very well done with Tony Todd though at the end of that movie because it just really like proved legacy is important and I thought that was something that was really well done. Candy Man I liked for the most part. I think. The, besides the uh, Vanessa Williams part, the only thing I really didn't care for Candyman also, and I'm sure you guys will probably agree, I don't feel like we saw any of the kills really in action. We got, like, a lot of the aftermath, it seemed like. Well, like, that bathroom sequence that they showed, like, with the bathroom, that had the potential to be so much better than what it was. <laughs> Well, the art gallery scene, we saw that, didn't we? No, we, no, yeah. kind of. Like, I think it's the pit. We saw it, but I don't feel like we even saw We saw it, but I don't feel like we saw it enough. But I definitely was, like, kind of let down with the bathroom sequence because I was so hoping to see more of that than what we did. Yeah, I agree. You know, that, yeah, it was, like, it hid, like, everything that was going on. Like, you saw the, the bathroom stall, so... Yeah, and did you, like, see all of the blood, like, on the floor when they did it? Did it? I'm thinking, oh, we're about to get this killer just whole sequence, and we didn't. And I was like, that was kind of a letdown. Yeah, but overall, I thought, I thought, it, was a, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. So. yeah, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I, I gave it for the most part. I, I did like it. I think I, did we give it, I did. I think I gave it an 8. Yeah, we gave it an 8. So we're, so. We were pretty close with you on that one, so. Yeah. I did. I did. So, I will say, so you guys said you're excited for Halloween ends. You saw X already. And how did you, and we talked about Nope already, because Nope, I definitely feel like, I said it last episode, I like how he hasn't revealed anything in that trailer for what that movie's gonna be about. So, um, I think that's something that's very well done with him with that. So, keeps, you guys have any... It keeps, oh, sorry. I <laughs> That trailer keeps you guessing. Yeah. Keep, keep, makes you want more. 
the trip. Yeah, I mean, did you like us or did you like Get Out more? I like Get Out more. I I love Get Out, and I I really liked us, but I love Get Out more. I just that movie. I was underwhelmed by us. See, that was just me, and I'm like you. I liked Get Out more. Me too. Yeah, so. On more, like it's just such a good movie. Something cool happened though. We were at Monster Mania, and we, we went to the panels, like the interviews, and John Carpenter was there. And I believe one of the one of the questions was like. What are some modern horror you liked that you've seen recently? And he said he was a fan of Get Out. Oh, he said he loved Get Out. So mm -hmm. I was like, that's pretty cool that like Carpenter's in. Uh, so, yeah, he, and John Carpenter is the great. I, the, you know what? That's the next question I'll use. So besides Halloween, what are some of your favorite John Carpenter flicks? Oh, um, I love um, The Fog. Nice. Yeah, that's a really good one. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to go with uh, They Live. We, we, Ooh, okay, really? They live. Yeah, you know what? They they live is one of those movies. I don't even consider it horror. It's more political. But with that being said, it's still a great film. It's got Roddy Piper in it, man. You you gotta love it. And, and <laughs> yeah, uh, Christine. Christine was awesome. Oh yeah, I forgot about Christine. Yeah. Uh, Christine. Uh, I'm trying to uh, body bags. Yeah, body bags is good. That's one is all right. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Only because, like, I'm, like, very picky and dicey with anthology horror. So that one is kind of really a hit or a miss for me. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, if, if it's done well, I, I, I appreciate it. Like, if they – sometimes in anthologies, they kind of, like they, – they bring all the stories together. I feel like that's, that could be a cool thing. Yeah. I will say the last anthology horror film that I watched that I really liked, The Mortuary Collection – we watched. I don't know. If you know. Yeah, it's on we, that was very well done. Yeah, we like very it. well done. It's on Shutter. Um, what was a oh, bad candy? Wasn't that? We like bad candy. That the movie. I started that movie. I couldn't get into it. I said I was going to try it again because I don't think I was into it in the moment. Yeah. But I just put that movie on the other day and I was not getting into it and I turned it off. Yeah, we. I, I don't know. I I love any movie that has like it takes place on Halloween, has like all the Halloween decorations. Like even if it's like the shittiest movie ever, like you like the October. Yeah, vibe. I love the October vibe. Yeah, so. For sure. <laughs> so I know you're a fan of Trick or Treat. Then you gotta be my favorite movie. Mm. Yes. I like. Yeah, you know what? That's a movie that I watched for the first time finally, uh, 2020. Because everyone I had kept like. Everyone on here was like, you have not seen Trick or Treat. And I'm like, no, I've never watched it. But I ended up watching that one, and I actually really ended up liking Trick or Treat. It has a great Halloween atmosphere vibe, yeah. I feel like. That is just lovely to watch. I'm a fan of uh, Trick or Treat from 1986, the rock and roll movie. <laughs> Great one. Yes, great one. Great one. I actually have a, a, uh, another follower. Shout out to Evil Dead Batman because he was the one that put me on the trick or treat and I absolutely loved it. That's one of those films. I just feel like there should be a Blu ray release. There should be a collector's edition. There should be a good. Dude, we need a Scream Factory release of that one. I agree. I, we have I agree. I'm hoping to see it this year. I am. We had the DVD, and that was kind of hard to find. Yeah. Like, the DVD was hard to track down. We have the DVD right now, but it definitely deserves, like, a collector's edition. Like, uh, it, it deserves, like, a good release. So. It does. It's an awesome film. Very underrated, too, if you ask me. I'm surprised it's not more popular, because it's got Ozzy. It's got Gene Simmons in it. It's got, like... It's got big names in it. I have no idea why it's... And I mean, you know what? For me, I'm not a metal head, but I still really enjoyed that movie, even still. Oh, yeah. So... Well, it, 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 it tells that, that, like, that classic story of, like, you know, the... the 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 jock bully and he's pushing around this like like this this rock and roll kid but then the kid gets his revenge it's kind of like a cool uh, it's one of those classic stories that we all love of course it's kind of like one of those male versions of Carrie I feel like yeah. Yeah. You know, same thing with another movie called Evil Speak. I feel like Evil Speak is the male version of Carrie in a lot of ways. I th that's a great point. I never thought of it like that, but yeah, I think you're correct. I do, so I kind of like those movies. Like, I guess this sounds cruel, but I kind of like those movies sort of where you have the person that's getting picked on, and they get their revenge at the end of it. Like Slaughter. 
High or something like that, or like yeah, like I mean, I'm not a fan of Slaughter High, but I do like the revi- like in terms of them getting their revenge on their bullies. Yeah. I guess I, I like the I like the uh, I do like the story, like you said, it's a good story, and uh, I think everybody can relate to that. We we'll, like if somebody's being mean, we want to see them uh, taken out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. That's one of the many things I liked about Carrie because it was like. Wow, you're really like being mean to this girl the entire movie, and then when she finally just snaps and loses it, it's like you really don't feel bad for the characters because it's like, well, you guys deserve it. So they killed a pig, like an innocent pig. I didn't like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, you know what? Yeah, they might have killed the and that they have killed the pig, but when she got finished killing all of them, it didn't even matter. So. That's one of our pet peeves. I don't care if you hack up people or anything like that, but if, especially when you kill a dog. I hate that. I hate that so much. Like when the dog doesn't get it, the dog should always survive. Because mm-hmm. I, I like Ooh. Yeah, you know what? I understand that because as sort of an animal lover myself, and I don't even realize it, to an extent, it is kind of hard to watch animals be killed on screen. I mean, it doesn't fully bother me, but it sort of does in a way, and it can be hard to watch. I agree. There's movies you won't watch because you're like, no, we're not watching that. I, you're I like, the, the dog. Like the, the, dog thing, does. the thing is like a really awesome horror movie, but I don't like the scene with the dog, so I have to fast forward through that part. Oh, I know you couldn't watch. I know you didn't watch Cannibal Holocaust then because animal killing in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, dude, I think they legit killed a turtle in that movie. <laughs> it's not one of my favorites, but I will say the animal killing in Cannibal Holocaust is pretty strong. It, no, it is. Didn't they? They they really did kill a they they killed a turtle in that movie for real. I heard. I'm a, I'm not sure fully actually, but I'm I'm sure they did. I can't say whether they did or not, but I will say the animal cruelty in that movie is strong. So I definitely don't recommend that one, Kaylee, at all. I think it was on the uh, last drive-in with Joe, Bob, and Darcy, and uh, like to pro- yeah to protest that Darcy cosplayed as a turtle. Do you remember that? <laughs> I don't know. I do. You know what? I've watched some of Joe Bob Briggs. I've not watched all of them because I'm kind of a late bloomer with him. But I have watched some of them, and some of them that I've watched have been really entertaining. So, and like we said, like the nicest people you'll ever meet. If they're ever at a con, like I. I couldn't rec- yeah. I couldn't recommend meeting them enough because they they will hang out and talk with you and the, like they're just the nicest people. I definitely have to look into that. Well, I hope they come to some conventions here because th- that would be awesome. I think there are. I know they have a really big fan base though. I kind of like see everyone on here post them all the time. So it's a lot of mutants. The mutant fam. <laughs> they call themselves the mutant fam. Yeah. I think I think the show's coming back actually. Yeah, the end of the month, I think. Mm-hmm. So yeah, do you think they're gonna show Halloween three? I uh, hope so. That would be awesome. I think it's very possible because um, it's on Shutter now. Mm-hmm. So yeah, now even though I like seeing him, like seeing a thing April Fool's Day, which I didn't know how serious it was. He said that he's not doing it, but I think if he gets enough enough people to convince him, he's gonna wind up doing it. And, it would be a funny episode, though, just because he's so against it. It would be funny to watch. Like the Hogzilla. I, you know what? I kind of wish when they do it, they do like a double feature of Halloween 2 and 3. I kind of hope that they go that route. That would be cool. That would be cool. Unless they want to just do movies that Joe Bob had, like the whole night. That would that'd be funny, too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I know he like hardcore hates Halloween 3. So, yeah, but dark hardcore. Huge fan, so that's what's funny about it. So she yeah. she keeps on wanting to, to to see it. So yeah, it's like I wish he just do it already. So it'll happen. I think it'll happen. So Plus, yeah, I, I do. Atkins, everybody loves Atkins. I I think he might. I think it would be cool to have him on the show. Yeah. Yeah, someone was saying that. You know, I, I'm kind of wondering with this season. They're, they actually, because from the movies I've seen that they put on there, they actually got a killer lineup, I ain't gonna lie, it looked like for this season. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what's going to be shown. Yeah, for sure. On our channel, we recap the episodes every week, and uh, we're going to finish up season three. Yeah, we have like three more episodes. Yeah, so every week we kind of film what went, what went down on that show, the movies they played, and... 
So we're going to try to wrap that up before the new season starts pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So, Yep. Well, that's dope. Well, we're going to end this live soon. So do you guys have any questions or anyone that's watching any questions? Because if not, we're going to end this soon. I want to thank you guys so much for being on. It is was a great pleasure to talk to y'all. One of my favorite, like, YouTube pages ever. So Hi. thank you so much. And we love your show. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. I mean, it, oh my God! Thank you so much for being on. I was like so nervous to message you because I'm like, I, I don't know if they're gonna even do it. Of so, of course. <laughs> any, any anytime you want to do something, yeah, just we'll, we'll we'll, anytime. Anything. Oh my God! Thank you so much. Sure. Well, we're gonna end this, I think. Well, I want to thank my special guests, that horror couple, Robbie and Kaylee, for being on. For anyone that has social media, please follow them. Two lovely human beings. Please follow them. Please follow their YouTube channel as well. That horror couple, definitely an amazing and fun channel just to watch in a whole. I'm Elm Street Warrior, and this is Horror Talk, where we either hate it or love it. Thanks for being on, guys. Thank you. Yeah.